hello and welcome to another episode of Dire Times. I'm your host David Dyer and today we find ourselves on the banks of the New River in West Virginia. Now here we're going to meet up with a couple guys who believe that the spirit of adventure and the passion for history is really kept alive in our rivers. So we're going to go talk to them, see what they got going on. Hey David Dyer, welcome to Dire Times. Ned Seb. Nice Ned, to pleasure to meet you. Clark Chapman. Clark, pleasure to meet you. So uh, took a lot of effort to catch up with you guys down the river. I mean, you'd think, you know, the river I could find you, it'd be easy. It's a pretty poor getaway car. It really <laughs> is. It really is. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing out here. Well, we've been uh, we've been on the river just over two weeks now. We started outside of Boone, North Carolina. Wow. Um, and we are attempting to paddle our way from the source of the new river there outside of Boone to the Gulf of Mexico, wow. at least to New Orleans anyway. So so how many, like in miles, what are we talking here? Talking just shy of 2,200 miles. Wow, and about how long is it going to take you to do that? We figure... 74 seven. days is the original count. So what, yeah. like three months or so, like right in there? Two and a half, three months, yeah. something like that. Yep. Wow, that's pretty crazy. So we, what what made you guys want to do this? Like just, you know, you woke up one morning and was like, hey, let's paddle. 2,500 miles down the... I don't know. I, I suppose it was some mix of uh, dear love for this region, but also wanting to go on an adventure at the same time. Uh, both of our families are from Appalachia and have been for over 200 years. And they came through these river valleys to settle the region before there were trains. So to go through the same route that many families came through 200 years ago. There's something to that I can't really Yeah, there's, there's definitely, words. you know, uh, I, I, I think a deep connection with the land, with the water. Uh, you know, I think we all feel it. You know, we're all kind of drawn to it, but very few of us these days really pursue that. Uh, right. and, Absolutely. and, you know, I think it's great that you guys are taking this time and really, really um, bringing some awareness to, you know, not only the history of the river, documenting, uh, the trip and, and that kind of thing, but but really just uh, getting out there, you know, just yeah. just being out there. Um, yeah, for me, this trip is about is about just the experience, about seeing the world from a different angle, moving at a different speed, seeing uh, seeing the world in a way that most people don't get a chance to anymore. That's, that's excellent. So, what what are you what what are your hopes that people take away from this experience? What I'd really like to see is anyone who is interested in what we're doing will hopefully be interested in in the rivers, in their watersheds, in what becomes of their wastewater when it goes down their drain, and start thinking about the rivers in a way that people used to, but don't necessarily anymore. We want people to, to be aware of uh, what it means to be a part of a watershed, I suppose. Okay, yeah, so, you know, the, the water cycle from, you know, it raining down to the river to the treatment plants to, the, to that right. process. So, okay. so remember that there's a river outside the flood walls on so many towns. I mean, these towns are here because there are rivers there. Well, and, and when early settlers settled, it was often because there was a water source directly adjacent to where right. they were, so that makes complete sense. Exactly. There was, I mean, in a lot of cases, the, the towns and cities will be going through, these cities were built up around these rivers. Uh, it was maybe not the central artery of, of town, but certainly a huge part of the, the lifeblood of any given community. Absolutely. Now, so many people have forgotten that. We want to kind of reconnect with, uh, with these rivers get wow. people to think about that as well. So then, you know, I'm sure everybody wants to know, because I know I want to know, you guys have been out for a couple weeks. What is your typical day? Like, paddling. canoe, paddling, food, One with like, the what's... paddle, one with the paddle. Uh, and about... uh, wake up in the morning, try to get up uh, an hour before sunrise, cook up a little breakfast, heat up some coffee, um, doing a lot of freeze-dried meals, uh, get out on the water as early as we can, Paddle, just paddle all day. Usually take a little break on the water. We don't even pull over to eat lunch usually. We'll just uh, snack on nuts, granola, things like that. We can just have it hand, keep dry. Excellent. Um, paddle till sun goes down, look for a good campsite. We try to plan it out where we're uh, on public land each evening. That's um, a good idea. You, yeah. Sure. You people around here, with. there's, eh, you <laughs> never but, know who's going to walk out on you. I mean, you say that though, but everybody's been really kind to us. Well, good. We haven't Everybody. run into anybody that's given us hell uh, about anything. Yeah, everyone's been super supportive. We've run across people who are landowners in the area. They say they're more than happy to put us up on, let us camp on their land. Everyone's been really, really friendly and supportive. 
Um, but we do try to stay on public land as much as we can. Uh, that's another thing we're trying to raise awareness to. If that's how people want to have to think about rivers is as a recreational uh, outlet, so be it. It gets them thinking about rivers and about the health of rivers and what it takes to uh, treat the rivers with the respect they deserve. Um, access to, to public river access, that's, that's huge. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I know one of the things that I am hugely curious about is, you know, the thought that you put into your gear and, you know, what, what was important to you guys to bring. So uh, if you don't mind, let's, let's kind of unpack your boat here and take a look at, you know, some of the stuff that you guys found important. Sure thing. Yeah. Excellent. Let's do it. All right. All right so gentlemen, uh, we have all your gear here. Uh, what do you all consider like your, your essential gear? I guess we should start by talking about the boat. Uh, wouldn't well, get very yeah, far I mean, without that. Otherwise it's swimming, right? Yeah, right. It's a Mad River Horizon series, which they don't make anymore. We were fortunate to find one just before we set out. It's a 17-foot canoe. This thing is made more for expeditions. It's not really a whitewater canoe. Okay. But there is no perfect canoe. There's going to be a canoe that does one thing better, and then there's going to be a canoe that does something better. And there's going to be some general purpose canoes, but they don't serve any purpose really well. True, and as you may not know, uh, the New River is some of the best whitewater in the entire world, between the New and the Gali. It's good yeah. stuff. Just yesterday, Woo! we uh, were lucky enough to go on Adventures on the Gorge, put us on their last trip of the season doing the Lower New River Gorge. We some serious Class 5s, and that is some good whitewater. In a raft. <laughs> yeah, not in this. Yeah, right. Correct. Yes. Other well, people have done it. Before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, not us. Not us. Yeah, that's that's some serious bravery. Right? Well, we're already crazy enough. Bra yeah, I don't know if I call it bravery at that point, but uh, yeah. So, so what do you what do you like to say? What do you consider? Like, you got your boat. Uh, what's your daily gear? Like, what is the stuff that, that you? I mean, I imagine you use everything, touch everything at least once. But you know, what, much, what's yeah. the most important to you? I guess um, I should start with the quotidian, the most essential but not pretty boring at least um bags yeah. you gotta keep everything dry that it's, makes good sense in and of themselves they're you know not that exciting but if we don't keep stuff dry then nothing is worthwhile and uh we've had a couple issues with dry bags some of them we found are not as good a quality as others it's uh, effective interesting. yeah interesting so i would be interested. quality dry bags or yeah maybe honorable. another video even a review video on some dry bags we'll get we'll get together we'll play top sure, of sure, very sure. Cool. Yeah, um, most of them look like this. This is your our standard issue one. The note, really what you have to do is fold this three times. If you can get four At or least. five, yeah. Yeah. the better. And then There's always the temptation back. to try to stuff more stuff in there. Of course. Right. Then, less uh, is more. Will really less fit. is more. Exactly. Less, is, less is dry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so we got plenty of dry bags to keep all our stuff dry. Um, warm clothing. Should say something about that. Um, rain gear. Oh yes. Very important. We've been rained on. It's. Well, I imagine you'll be snowed on. Yeah. By the time actually, we have a little bit of on. snow yeah. and a little bit of sleet already. Um, so yeah, warm, still October. Warm we have more of that to come. So no doubt. The northernmost point is Cincinnati. After that, it's all south. But that won't happen until like November 10th or so. So yeah, we're geared up for uh, for some cold weather. Um, you should also mention, uh, uh, I'm yeah. not really a spandex <laughs> man. <laughs> underwear, dry socks, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm pulling my uh, my underwear out of Band-Aid boxes these days. Nice. And uh, nice. merino wool, um, yeah. it it dries quickly, and quickly, it's quickly everything you really need. And like we have gotten wet, and it's been somewhat miserable. I imagine so. But. When you have clothes that can dry quickly, like merino wool does. And keep you warm even when they are wet, yeah. which is important. Um, what else we got here? Well, uh, let, let's look at, like, safety gear. I'm sure you guys have safety gear. So sure. what what do you have? In we're, uh, you know, we're running some pretty serious whitewater. Once we get on the bigger rivers, we'll be worrying with, uh, nice. We'll be worrying with a lot of barge traffic, so we are pretty concerned with our, our well-being here. Um, got our... Life preservers here. This one is actually one we've got on loan from Adventures on the Gorge Class, class 6. Or class 6 uh, yeah. This one's a Class 5 made for uh, running whitewater. We've been using mostly Class 3 ones, which are more general purpose. Uh, yeah, they look a little more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they've got pouches. Pouches are awesome. Love pouches. Each end of this boat has flotation, flotation bags. Yeah. Flotation yeah. bags for the we'll take, we'll take a closer look at those. Yeah. Right, cool. 
Um, we've fashioned ourselves a little spray skirt there to nice. try to keep some keep of the water the out when yeah. we uh, hit yeah. some of the bigger rapids. Even when you're hitting the rapids perfectly, you just you get a lot of water. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, what I, I see too, you have a selection of paddles here. Yeah. Uh, I imagine you just didn't bring one apiece. We've um, actually already lost one paddle on Buck Rapids. Uh, where Did you get away to it? Is it as it erupted in? And oh, I did. Water? Yeah, we for actually sure. watched right. it float away for quite a ways, <laughs> trying to keep an eye on it. Yeah. And yeah. I had this really cool little hat too, and you could watch it sort of float <laughs> by. Well, and I, I think, and that is one thing. Unless you really experience, and I, I love whitewater. In fact, we're going to do a Dire Times video out. You know, hopefully doing some whitewater here next year, and you know, when golly season kicks up, October time frame. Um, but you know, until you've been in one of those rapids and just seen your stuff, just and it because it's not it's not gentle like you imagine. Oh, the boat turned over and the stuff's floating away. It's <laughs> it's the stuff erupted out of the yeah. boat and it exploded into the air and yeah. there's some of the stuff there and some of the stuff. There. It's pretty much like five seconds of sheer horror and then <laughs> you have to figure out what to do. But it's funny how in your mind it becomes slow motion. Everything oh, yeah. the one <laughs> second during which you capsize becomes 30 minutes in your memory. But uh, yeah, we got a selection of nice paddles here. Uh, this one's LL Bean. This is the one I've been using most of the time. We got the nice rock guards on the end good, here. Good. Um, find ourselves pushing off rocks more often than we'd probably like, especially in the earlier, more shallow stretches. This is a longer paddle. Also, uh, actually, it's made by the Gray Owl Paddle Company. These are good for whitewater. When you see rafters, they uh, they often have very long paddles. And it's good for being a sternman. You can really uh, sort of use it as a rudder steer. But when you get out to the broad rivers, this is nothing short of annoying. So, we haven't used this yet, but it's a bent paddle. These are for speed. And we aim to get to New Orleans by New Year's. Be exciting. Let me reiterate. <laughs> so to do so that... It's, it's, it is now exists. It exists. That You put that out in we've, the world. We've said oh, yeah. that multiple oh, yeah. times. We're, we're going to be there New Year's Eve. Anyone's welcome to join us. Jackson Square, New Year's Eve. It's going to awesome. be a party. Awesome. But, uh, these, with, I think it's like a 12 degree angle. If you're paddling all day, every day, that will give you more uh, more power, more speed um, for, on those broader rivers making making time. Um, I see a map case there and a compass. Yeah. Once again, we got a lot of good maps here. Second gear in Asheville where we got a lot of our used gear. Um, these National Geographic maps have been fantastic for us. Um, waterproof. Yeah, waterproof maps. All maps plus. should be waterproof. Um, so I have seen I have seen some electronics here. Um, yeah, we. And, you know, it's, I see the paper. The, I mean, it's always good to go with the the waterproof map because it's not ever really going to fail you unless right. it is part of that gear that erupts out and <laughs> right. hits a rapid. Um, we haven't been relying on GPS too much, but we are trying to stay connected. Uh, you know, do some blog posting and whatnot on our on our Facebook page. So we are trying. It's been to pretty be... excellent. I've been following you guys. So. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. We're trying to catch up with a lot of images. So patience, public, patience. Well, and just so you're aware, we're, again, gonna have those links in the description below. So something that you can also follow them as they go too. So we're doing most of those updates from uh, from our iPhones here. This is Clark's, got a nice cracked screen good, there. Good, good. But that happened before we got the uh, life-proof cases, which keep them, uh, keep them waterproof. It's um, like that cracked screen doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. And he's got the flotation yeah, device good, on there. Seems like just a, in case. A, a good idea. Yeah. And I have swam with that thing, and it has not failed me yet. So. Good, um, good. And Here's in terms that. of keeping those juiced up, we're not often stopping and plugging them in. So sure. we have a couple solar panels here. We got this guy that little rolls up into something nice and small, nice, unroll it, nice. hook it up on the boat, and uh, that'll juice it up pretty quick, actually. That's cool. Uh, That's very cool. I know a lot of a lot of camping and a lot of gear is going that way. We've got another panel here somewhere. This guy, uh, this Eaton panel, it's a solar-powered speaker. Um, this one will hold a charge. At this one here, we can only we plug in and while you it's get, you get one for one. Sun. Like yeah, as it, as it is sun, you get charged. Exactly. Goes away. This guy will hold a charge after the fact. We can charge it up all day at camp at night. Plug in our phones later, and it'll juice that up. Very cool. Um, plus, it's got a good sound on it too. Yeah, for, yeah nothing like a little music. You can oh, take yeah. your. You uh, I never thought I'd say this in life, but you can take your iPhone <laughs> and put speakers. Put, like you can sync it up to the speakers. Oh yeah, yeah. And jam out and. Very uh, cool. Just like the Frontiersman, actually. <laughs> so yeah, maybe Kitten not the most that. essential gear, but uh, maybe some of the sexier stuff anyway. Hey, absolutely. Well, we do live in a modern age. Why not take advantage right. of some yeah. of it, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'll say this. Now, this and this is this bothers me a little bit. I, I won't lie to you guys. The one thing 
that for me is like the critical staple in any adventuring thing is a good knife. I've yet to hear you guys talk about a good knife. Yeah. I'm concerned. I'm worried <laughs> about you all. I've got a little Gerber knife. I don't. I've got it right here, actually. A little. Uh, I can't remember the name of the model. It's treated me real well. Have it right there at well, hand. I'll tell you, gentlemen. I mean, that's that's a folder. I mean, if you're going to be out and you really need to rely on a knife and cut it, I'm thinking that you're going to need a couple Morris. Uh, they're made in Sweden. Brightly colored, so you can see them. Stainless blades, extremely sharp. How courtesy of Dire Times, Are so right let, them, let them treat you well. Very, very uh, cool. Thank you much. Absolutely. Uh, oh, I, yeah. They are, yeah, they're, they're definitely you. in there, absolutely. Uh, like I said, I, was, I, the whole time we sat here and talked, I'm like, I, I lead <laughs> with knife. Important. I lead right. with knife. Yeah. Like, this is, uh, so yeah, absolutely enjoy those. That is awesome. Um, Thank you. Man. Absolutely. I well, those it. those are actually, uh, I, you know, Dire Times, which uh, we we're actually Sharp. going through a lot of changes now. We're, we're becoming Dire Outdoor. Um, so we're starting to have a retail side to the YouTube side. And this is one of the first products that we picked up and really believe in them. They're, they're some amazing blades. Um, they do not float like most knives. So uh -huh. the best I could do was give you brightly colored ones. So hey, at least great. you could hopefully that won't you can watch be. it as it as it <laughs> as it erupts out of the clip that in right here. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Thank you. Absolutely, gentlemen. And, uh, I like to so hope they treat you well. And also, I uh, hooked you guys up with some jerky. So, you know, about a month's Appreciate supply. Appreciate that. So, oh, yeah. Uh, it's laying around here somewhere. I'm get stowed in. But uh, I won't hold you all up anymore. I definitely appreciate you guys uh, letting me take up a little bit of your day and eat up the daylight where you probably should be paddling. We'll but, get back uh, out there. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, guys, oh, absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Be well, well yeah. be safe, and uh, look forward to uh, keeping up with you on your trip. I appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Sure. Take care. Take it easy. So we've had a great day out here on the New River, uh, hanging out with Ned and Clark, partway through their awesome river adventure. Gentlemen, have a safe trip. See you in New Orleans. I'll hold you to it. And if you would like to follow them yourself, you can check out their Facebook, which I'll put in the link below, and they're making pretty regular updates, uh, have some excellent little blogs, excellent little photos, so you can follow them too. And if you'd like to see a little bit more of what my channel has to offer, you can click here for some practical uh, survival tips, here for some practical survival tips, but in the more self-defense realm, or here for some just other really neat stuff going on in the world. So as always, I'm your host, David Dyer. This was Dyer Times, and thanks for watching. to like, comment, and subscribe.